creation of an agency, there are several definitions. According to section 139, the authority of an agent may be expressed or even implied in an agency. Express or implied agreement can form agency contract when no consideration is needed. According to section 138, agency mentions that no consideration is necessary to create an agency. For example, the case of KG and Jaya Sindri and Burhan versus Penn Reliance Sindri and Burhan in 1996. It describes that the agency arrangement need not be in writing, since it doesn't need consideration to form an agency. This case describes that the Court of Appeal held that the law does not require that an agency or sub-agency agreement must be in writing. It also could be opposite. Furthermore, Part X of the Contract of 1950, which also contains the relevant provisions on agency, does not contain any requirement that the appointment of an agent or even sub-agent has to be in written form or be evidenced in writing. See by express agreement, or even called as express authority, according to section 140, happens when it's given words spoken or written communication stating that the nature of authority. It should be based on the appropriate construction of terms on the agreement. Agents are appointed by executing a formal attorney based on written and stamped documents, considered formal. Therefore, instructions from the principal must not be ambiguous as the principal will bond to the terms where the agent had clearly interpreted the instructions in a manner not intended by the principal. The case that were involved in this type of agreement is Ireland v. Livingston. In this case, the instructions from the principal was uncertain and it could be interpreted into multiple possible manners. Section 140 in Contract Act 1950 states that implied agreement happens when it is to be inferred from the circumstances of the case, where things spoken or written or even the ordinary cause of dealing may be counted as circumstances of the cases. Agency by estoppels and agency of necessity are some of the cases in this type of agreement. In the case of Chang Yin P v. William Jacks and Co. Malaya Limited, 1964, the appellant and Yong, who is a minor, were registered as partners. At a meeting with the representative of the respondent company, the appellant held himself out to be Yong's partner. Goods were supplied to Yong but were not paid for. The respondent company obtained judgment against the appellant and Yong. The appellant appealed to federal court which held that since the appellant had held Yong out of his agent, who had the authority to do things on his behalf, the appellant was liable for Yong's act. Henley Hutchinson v. Bray had limited case, it shows that the creation of agency was happened through implication. The Court of Appeal held that Mr. Richards had authority to enter into the guarantee, apart from the circumstances where he had entered various contracts on behalf of the company previously. The appeal court held that Lord Sirdale had rights to claim the indemnity and guarantees because Mr. Richards, from the company's conduct over several months, had the actual authority, being implied from the circumstances, to make those guarantees as a representative of the company. Therefore, the court held that although he wouldn't normally have authority to guarantee the loan, as he was entitled to believe that he was entitled to a loan. Therefore, it is considered as an implied agreement for the agency. There are only two forms of contracts exist, which are contract between an agent and principal, and also contract between a principal and third party. For the contract of agent and principal, the agency is the relationship that's created when the principal appoint another person called the agent to act on their behalf. The key part of an agency relationship is that the agents must be authorized before he or she can act on their behalf. Usually, this authorization is written down into a contract which details exactly what an agent can and cannot do, but it doesn't have to be. The principal agency relationship is created in one of four ways, which are express agency, implied agency, apparent agency, and also agency by ratification. As for the express agency, the principal and agent will sign a contract or even make an oral contract whereby the principal instructs the agent to make decisions on their behalf. Here, the agents will do any works that the principal order them to do. Signing a retainer with an attorney is a good example of an express agency. In this type of agency, as long as the agent stays within the scope of the contract, the principal will be bound by the agent's decisions. Next, as for the implied agency, the principal agency relationship is referred from the conduct of the parties. The mechanic scenario is a classic example of this type of agency. As for the apparent agency, 
it's quite tricky. It only arises when the principal leads a third party to believe that an agent has authority to act on behalf of the principal, but the principal has not actually given the agency such authority. In this case, the principal will make the third party believe that the agent will be the part of a principal's works. Therefore, the third party will believe that any works will be done by the agents on behalf of the principal. Agency by ratification is actually the opposite of what most people understand the agency to be. It happens when someone misrepresents himself as another's agent. Agency arises when the principal approves or ratifies the deal after the fact. Section 136 Employment of Agent The one who can employ or recruit an agent is the one who is at the age of majority. According to the law which he is subject to and who is the of a sound mind. Section 138. No consideration is necessary to create an agency. The core of the agency relationship is built on trust. An agency can take place in two types of contracts. First, made between the principal and agent, who has his authority delegated by the principal to act for and on behalf of the principal. Second, made between the principal and the third party. Law of Agency Agency can be created through five types. First, express. Second, implying. Third, estoppel. Fourth, ratification. And the last five is necessity. The agency by a sober. It describes that a person cannot be bound by a contract made on his behalf without his authority. However, if he by his words and conduct allows a third party to believe that the particular person is his agent, even when he is not, and the third party relies on it to the detriment of the third party, therefore he will be stopped or even precluded from denying the existence of that person's authority to act on his behalf. In short, agency by estoppel means that a defendant will be liable to a plaintiff because the defendant's negligence caused the plaintiff to reasonably rely on their being an agency relationship between the defendant and someone who purported to act on behalf of the defendant. Authority as an agent to act on that person's behalf. As for an example situation, we could say that a salesperson considered as an agent can bind his company, who are principal, to a sales contract because the salesperson has authority as an agent to represent the company. Agency of ratification. Agency by ratification can happen only if it falls under these two situations. First, the agent who has been appointed has exceeded his authority when he enters into a contract with the third party. And second, a person who has no authority to act for the principal but he acts as if he has the authority to enter into a contract with third party. Section 149, the principal has the option whether to reject or accept the contract. When he accepts, it is known as ratification. In ratification, got nine conditions. First, the act must be unauthorized. Second, the unauthorized act is lawful. Third, the agent must act as an agent, not as a principal. Fourth, the agent must have a principal who is in existence. Five, the principal must have capacity to enter a contract. Six, the principal must ratify the whole contract. Seven, the principal must have all the material facts regarding the contract. Eight, ratification must be made within a reasonable time. And lastly is nine, ratification must not injure a third party. Explanation for number one, the act must be unauthorized. The contract done by the agent was without authority or exceeding the authority. 
Second, the unauthorized act is lawful. Case under Brooke v. Hook, the principal may not ratify a contract in which his signature has been forged by the unauthorized agent. In number three, the agent must act as an agent, not as a principal, means he must not allow the third party to believe that he is the principal. Case under Kelly, Maxted and Co. vs. Duran, an agent was unauthorized by the appellants, there is a principal, to buy wheat at the certain price. The agent exceeded wheat his authorized and bought it at a higher price. However, the agent contracted in his own name. Hell, the appellant was not liable to Duran his third party because the appellant could not ratify the contract because the contract was made in the agent's own name. Number 4. The agent must have a principal who is in existence held a contract to buy a hotel made by an agent on behalf of a company which was not registered for much could not be ratified by the company is it because the company's principal did not exist at that time number five the principal must have a capacity to enter the contract means the principal in contract act 1950 appeals for not unsound mind not bankruptcy and not blacklisted number six the principal must ratify the whole contract he cannot accept which is become have adventures to him and reject the rest number seven the principal must have all the material facts regarding the contract case under march versus joseph a principal had ratified a contract without the full knowledge of all material facts held the principal was not bound to such contract Number 8. The ratification must be made within a reasonable time. Case under Metropolitan Ellison Park v. Kingham and Son, the agent contracted to buy the egg without the authority. The principal tried to ratify the contract within one week after it was made, but the Hill state the contract the ratification was too late. And the last for the ratification, number 9. Ratification must not injure a third party. Means the ratification must not injure or affect the interest of a third person in a section 153. Agency by necessity, section 142. A person may become an agent although he was not appointed. When this situation happens, that person is known as the agent by necessity. Got a three conditions must be fulfilled. First, it is impossible to get the principal instruction. Number two, the agent action is necessary to prove loss to the principal. And the last is the agent has act in a good health. This is the case for this issue. Springer versus Great Western Railway and Co. The defendants agreed to carry the plaintiff's item tomato from Jersey to Convent's Garden Market. Owning the bad weather, the ship arrived at Wet Mouse. Meanwhile, the defendant's worker was on the strike. Therefore, the tomatoes were found to be bad condition. The defendant decided to sell the tomato at the Wet Mouse because the defendant felt that the tomato could not arrive at the Convent Market in a sellable condition. But however, the defendant did not communicate this issue to the plaintiff. Plaintiff claimed for the damage, then held the plaintiff was entitled to damage because the defendants were not agent by necessity and they have failed to communicate with the plaintiff when they could have done so. This is the effect of agency by necessity. First, the agent will be protected from any claim of the principal. Second, the agent will be entitled to the additional payment for his effort to protect, to preserve the safety and interest of the principal. And third, the contract exists between the principal and the third party.